it says, in the beginning, God. Now, I realize there may be some of you today that don't believe in God. You say that there is no God. Some of you may be an atheist. You may call yourself an agnostic. But whatever you are, one thing you know that you are not is you are not from the beginning because in the beginning, God. Some of you say you're God. Some of you say your stuff is God. Some of you say nothing is God. But whatever you say you are, one thing that we know you are not is from the beginning. Because in the beginning was God. You know, yes, it's true that atheists say that there is no such thing as God. But God says there is no such thing as atheists. Every atheist is an atheist until they're in the foxhole. Every atheist is an atheist until they get terminal cancer. And then they say, Lord, my God, help me. In fact, I'm so confident there is no such thing as atheism that I could disprove atheism in three seconds with one simple question. And I, I wonder tonight in Mount Airy, I wonder, is there, is there any atheist, is there any confident atheist in town tonight that you're so sure there's no God that you would be willing to come over and let me ask you a question? to disprove and dispel atheism once and for all? Where, where are the atheists of Mount Airy? Where are the people that are so sure there's no God that they know you could come over here right now and I wouldn't be able to disprove atheism in three seconds? Is there anybody tonight? Come on, atheists. Come on, atheists, where is your confidence, atheist? I'll tell you, atheism doesn't exist. There's a lot of teenagers, there's a lot of teenagers that become atheists, and eventually they grow older and they mature, and they turn to God, and some people never grow up, and they live their whole lives as atheists, only to stand at the door of heaven and knock on the door and say, Lord, Lord, let me in. And then he says, it's too late. You, you pretended to be an atheist for too long. You wore the mask for too long. And it's too late. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Where there is weeping, and gnashing teeth. Mount Airy, I'm here tonight to beg you, don't wait until the ending to know what was from the beginning. God. Everything you see had a beginning. Everything traces back to a beginning. It's like a, it's like a teenager who who, who pretends that he doesn't have the DNA of his parents and says, I'm not going to look like my parents. I'm not going to act like my parents. I didn't begin with my parents. And then one day, eventually, he has to look in the mirror. He has to face the truth. And everybody on this street corner tonight lives like there's a God. If all we are is evolution, 
if all we are is in a happen and chance universe that didn't have us in mind, if all we are is a purposeless existence, if we are just stardust, then there's nothing really wrong with murder, there's nothing wrong with rape. There's nothing wrong with anything, but you don't live like that atheist. You live like people have value. You live like there's a right and wrong. You live like things matter because in the beginning, God. And you were made in the image of God. And you started with God and you can't escape it. And you refute your atheism every day you live. You claim atheism but live like a Christian. Live like a God-fearing person. Live like there's some kind of righteousness in the world. It goes on to say, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And there was a dark and formless void. Some of you tonight are still living like the world is a dark and formless void. You're going around and you're stumbling. You're fumbling. You're walking like you're in the dark. Some of you try to drink your darkness away, but the darkness hasn't gone away. Some, some of you are cheating on your spouse. And you try every day so hard to hide it. To make sure you're not seen and you're in the dark. Some of you try to smoke the darkness away, but the darkness has not left. You may get lit, but you got no light. You might drink Bud Light, but it doesn't give you true light. You might sleep around, but you're still in the dark. And I'm here tonight to tell you, Mount Airy, everyone who is listening, that you don't have to be in the dark anymore. The world is no longer a dark and formless void. God bless you. The world was once dark, but it's not dark anymore because God said what no one else could say. God stepped into the darkness and He spoke what no boyfriend could speak. He spoke what no girlfriend could speak. He spoke what no drug dealer could speak. He spoke what no boss could speak. He spoke what no demon could speak. No law could speak. No politician could speak. He spoke and he said, let there be light. Let there be light. Mount Airy. Let there be light on this land tonight. Let there be light on this street corner tonight. Let there be light in your heart, child of God. Let there be light in your mind. Let there be light in your thoughts. Be filled up with the light of Jesus Christ and come to have the joy and the freedom of the Lord God Almighty. Step into darkness no more. Let this be the last day of darkness for your life. Let this be the last day of being deceived by the devil and come to know the light of Jesus. Step into the light. Genesis 1 is over. The light has come into the world. He was the light for all men. That anyone who is called by the name of Jesus has full rights to be a child of God. You are not meant to be an addict. You're meant to be a child of God. You're not meant to be depressed. You're meant to be a child of God. 
You're not meant to be brokenhearted. You're meant to be a child of God. You're not meant to live in the darkness. You were meant to live in the light. Amen. You were not meant to be broken. You were meant to be a whole, righteous, holy son of God, child of God. Hear the voice of the Lord tonight. Do not harden your heart any longer. You were meant to be a child of God. You were meant to be a son of God, not a child of the devil. You were meant to know the truth, not to live in lies. You were meant to be free, not to be bound up in chains. Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. I wonder tonight, Mount Airy, if anyone just has the courage. Is there anyone tonight that just has the courage? To just open up your heart. The Bible says, open up the gates and let the King of Glory come in. Who is this King of Glory? He is the Lord Almighty. Strong in battle. Open up ye gates and let this King of Glory come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord. He is mighty. He is the King of Glory. Is there anybody that has the courage to just open up the gates of your heart and let the light come in? Is there anybody on this street corner tonight that just has the courage to say, I'm tired of self-loathing. I'm tired of self-indulgence. I'm tired of being lied to by the enemy. I'm tired of being brokenhearted. I'm tired of being in the dark. I'm tired of being lied to. Come into my life, Jesus. Come and shine in a dark place. Come and remove everything that has torn me down. Is there anybody tonight? Yes, Lord. How about you, sir? Shanti. How about you, ma'am? Is there anybody that's finally ready to let the light come in? Let the light come in. Let the light come in. God bless you. God bless you. If there's anybody here that's just ready, ready to receive the light of Christ, you've been living in the dark, just raise your hand. I just want to say a prayer. This prayer doesn't do it, but your faith in this prayer does. Lord Jesus, I thank you for whoever's hearing this message under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray right now, darkness be removed in the name of Jesus. Bondage be removed in the name of Jesus. Addiction, break every addiction in the name of Jesus. Come, Lord, come and shine your light where there is peace. Thank you, Lord, that you have conquered the grave. Thank you that your light evaporates every darkness right now. Thank you that your light evaporates all addictions right now. Thank you that your light evaporates all oppression and depression right now. Thank you that your light heals every brokenness, the deepest wounds of our heart. Thank you that your light goes all the way to the deepest places. We receive you, Lord Jesus. We receive you, Lord Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Brother, you want to take a turn? or uh, Maybe me? in a second, yeah. Okay. A second. Amen. The Word goes on to say that God said, let there be light. And He separated the light from the darkness. Light the, uh, is separate from darkness. Any Jesus that you think blends into the darkness, any Jesus that you think wants to buddy up with sin, if you, if you get high with Jesus, if you get crunk with Jesus, the only Christ that blends in with the darkness is the Antichrist to which many have come. From the beginning, Jesus separated the light from the darkness. 
That's why you see all these uh, so-called Christians getting married to unsaved people. And there's no prayer in the household. There's no joy in the household. There's no freedom. It's because how can light fellowship with darkness? How can two people walk together if they do not agree? And we're being taught, we're being taught that, that there really is no light that stands out. That God is just blending in with darkness. God is just blending in with sin and things that destroy. But in the beginning, He separated the light from the darkness. And He called the light day. And He called the darkness night. We live in a time where we call the light dark. And we call the darkness day. We call good evil. And we call evil good. We call men women. And we call women men. And it's just like the devil to do the very reverse of what God put in order. Of what God put in place. And many of you are all twisted up and you don't know why. Many of you are burdened each day and you don't know why. And it's because, just as the Bible predicted, we have called good evil, not knowing it was evil, and we have called evil good. But when you come into the light, when you come into the light, there is order. And where there is order, there is joy. When there is order, you step into your purpose. Some of you are just living every day with no purpose. You're living every day aimless. You're getting high. You're staying in your house. You got no sense of identity. And it's because you abandoned the light. Darkness cannot help itself. Darkness is too dark to help itself. You can't educate darkness. You, you, can't, you can't dress up darkness to make it better. You can't enlighten darkness. That's why some of you have PhDs, but your mind is darker than ever. Light must come from above. And we're here tonight to tell you that the light has come. Yes. Will you receive him? Yes. Lord. Will you receive him? Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on, child of God. You know you're in the darkness. Come and receive the light. Come and receive the light. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He died for you. And in Christ, you are a righteous and holy son. And he is a perfect father. God bless you. So, okay. Would you like to hold the sign? Sure. And then I have the gospel tracks in my pocket. Okay, I'll grab anyone. one if I need it. If you want to hold on to these. Sure, 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 sure. Hallelujah. 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 Shante, baby, shante. The word of the Lord declares in Ephesians chapter 6 that the battle we fight is not against flesh and blood, but it's against spiritual powers, wickedness in the heavenly realms, that there are demonic forces that are operating in this world that are manipulating and controlling your flesh that you are a slave to passions and desires and you do not know why. You do not know why you're a slave to the pornography. You don't know why you're a slave to the alcohol, to the cigarette, to the nicotine. I'm here to tell you today that there are real demons that live in people. Demons are real, that there are spiritual beings, as the Bible declares, in the heavenly realms that operate inside of people, making them do things they ought not to do. That's why there are wicked things that happen. That's why there's murder, there's envy, there's jealousy. 
there's covetousness, wanting things that you don't have to satisfy a pleasure within yourself. There's anger, there's, there's sexual immorality. Man, sexual immorality is on a rampant. Um, in this month of June, I know the world is celebrating what uh, we would call Pride Month, a month where homosexuality, uh, the, the sin of homosexuality is welcomed in the world. But God says no. God says no. God says turn away from your sexual immorality. Uh, God says turn away from your heterosexual sin just as much as he says turn away from your homosexual sin. God says that sex outside of marriage is sin. It's called fornication. Sleeping with anyone other than your wife or your husband is called adultery. God says keep yourself pure for marriage to not uh, turn to sexual things that will destroy your, destroy your body. Um, lust, turn yeah. away from lust. Turn away from homosexuality. Turn away from heterosexual sin. Uh, if nobody's going to tell you this, I'm going to tell you that God does not want you to share your body with everyone you see or come in contact with, but He wants, he wants you to keep your body pure. <laughs> Repent, Repent, turn away. The Bible says that the body was made for the Lord. That we were made to worship God and to love Him. Not to give our bodies to people we don't know. To fill an emptiness that only God can fill. You might want to sort of... Just the month of June the belongs to the Lord, the cars to not to sin. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. And God says to turn away from your sin, good. that they there's a better good. way than sleeping around with people who you see Bless you. Uh, that you don't even know that carry diseases, that carry all types of things. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm speaking as someone who used to live in a homosexual lifestyle that God rescued Amen. me out of. You can be set free. You have to turn away from your homosexuality. You have to repent. Repent. You have to repent. You have to turn away from homosexuality. Turn away from your heterosexual sin. Turn away from sleeping uh, with, with men and women outside of the confounds of marriage, uh, having children out of wedlock and not doing things the way God wants you to do. That's why divorce is such uh, a high rate. That's why men and women, uh, they, they don't stay around long enough to have sex with this person and that person. They say that they love you and they turn around and they leave and people are, are so heartbroken. People are so lost because you've disobeyed God in the way he has designed your body to function. He did not design the male anatomy, the, the anus, he did not design the anus to be penetrated. That is not the proper use of your body. If nobody's going to tell you this, I will tell you. Amen. I know that schools are teaching something opposite of what is right, of what is good, of what is true. But I will tell you that the male anus was not made to be penetrated. You need to turn away from that. There's diseases that come from doing those types of things, and it's just not the way the Lord has designed the body to function. Amen. It's not the way. The, the, the male was made for the woman, and the woman was made for the male. Hey, God bless you. And they were called to be fruitful and multiply. That God designed for the, for the man to be married to the woman and the woman to be married to the man. Yes, Lord. And they were to live together under the, the compounds of a godly marriage. Yeah, turn of how God designed for a man and a woman to come together. Not a woman and a woman. Not a man and a man. No, it's impossible to change your gender. That's impossible. It's, it's impossible. You can, you can cut off uh, your, your, your boobs and, and you know, have a, some surgery down at the bottom, but that does not make you a man. Nor does it make you a woman if you go to surgery to get some boobs and you cut off your Johnson, that doesn't make you a woman. In fact, I think it's very disrespectful to women uh, for a man to do such things to his body and then walk around claiming that I'm a woman. I think that's disrespectful to the woman in this society. I think it's very disrespectful to the men in this society 
that women would uh, uh, cut off their, their, their boobs and, and go get something tied to their vajayjay and walk around saying that I'm a man. That's very disrespectful to men. And it's just not true. You're not a man if you go in and have a penis surgically attached to your body. And you're not a woman if you go and have uh, breast implants. If you're a man and you go and have breast implants, that doesn't make you a woman. And if you're a woman and you go and have a penis attached to your vagina, it does not make you a man. It's impossible. And I'm here to address that lie that you can change your gender. It's a lie from hell. It's a lie from hell that a man is supposed to have sex with a man and a woman is supposed to have sex with a woman. It's a lie from hell. And I'm here to address that lie. And I'm also here to say that if you're a slave to that passion or that desire, and you just don't know why, I'm here to say that the freedom is found in Jesus Christ. That Jesus sets homosexuals free from desires contrary to the way that they were designed. A man was designed to be with a woman, and a woman was designed to be with the man, and nothing else in between. You were not made to sleep around with animals, or kids, or anything of that nature. You were made for the, the man was made for the woman and the woman was made for the man. So I'm here just to address that lie. I'm also here to address the lie of the church that God is okay with homosexuality. I know that the church, or some parts of the, of the church of people claiming to follow Jesus have made a notion that God is okay with the sins of homosexuality, with sexual immorality all across the board, that it's okay to have sex outside of marriage, that it's okay to, uh, for a man to sleep with a man and a woman to sleep with a woman. Uh, it's a lie from hell. It's not okay that. God says, turn away from that. He says, turn away from fornication. God says, stop sleeping outside of marriage. Amen. Marriage. God says, that's not okay. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says that if you turn away from your sins, if you repent from your sins, if you turn to Jesus Christ with a repentant heart, that He will forgive you. God wants to forgive the sins of the homosexual. God wants to forgive the sins of the so-called transgender. God wants to forgive the sins of the pedophile, of the one who sleeps with animals, of the one who has sex outside of marriage. God wants to forgive your heterosexual sin. God actually wants to set you free from that. But forgiveness is only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Where all of your sexual sin was put on the cross. Yes, Lord. Where you no longer have to thirst and hunger after pornography to make you feel good where you no longer have to thirst and lust after woman if you're a man and after man if you're a woman or vice versa to make you feel good. But that you can be set free. You can be set free from that. And that's only found in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe that Mount Airy belongs to the Lord. Mount Airy belongs to Jesus Christ. Yes. Mount Amen. Airy does not belong to any uh, uh, particular uh, sin. It does not belong to uh, uh, alcoholism. It does not belong to, to heroin addiction. It does not belong to homosexuality. Mount Airy belongs to Jesus. Yes. Mount Airy belongs to Jesus. Amen. This ground that I'm standing on belongs to Jesus Christ. This ground that I'm standing on is holy ground. Yes, Lord. And it belongs to Jesus Christ. It yes. does not belong to the devil. May the, the, the bondage that you found yourself in in your mind, may you be set free from my torments. Yes. 
May you be set free from yes. mind torments. Yes, Lord. Where you have no peace in your mind. Yes, Lord. Where you're looking to cigarettes and weed and all different types of things to give you peace. Yes, Lord. Set free from that today. Amen. God bless you. Heavy. Amen, brother. Amen. Yes, I'm here to address the lie that God is okay with your sin. God is not okay with your sin. But there is a day of wrath. There is a place called hell. And if you do not turn away from your sin, and if you die without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will go to hell. It's a real thing. Hell is a real place. There is a real lake of fire. There is a real lake of fire that never goes out. And if you die without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you die without your sins being forgiven, that is where you will end up. Jesus Christ died to save you from that place. You are not dead. God wants to save you. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, what you've said, God wants to save you, and it's only through Jesus Christ. If your parents won't tell you this, if your teachers won't tell you this, this black preacher will tell you that Jesus wants to set you free. That Jesus loves you. That God loves you. That God demonstrated his love in this way. This is the way that God demonstrated his love. That through Christ Jesus, he died for us through Jesus Christ dying for our sins. That was the demonstration of God's love for you, that while you were stuck in your sin, while some of you are still living a life of sin, the call to repentance is still ringing. And repentance, turning away from sin, is a beautiful thing. Saying no to drugs and saying no to alcohol, saying no to the, the, the various ways that this world has convinced you that having sex is okay. But instead, turning to Jesus Christ. That is the way. That is the only way that you will find freedom. In the Gospel of John, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man will see the Father, no man will see God, will get into heaven except through Him. There is no other way. If you've never thought about where you would go when you die, if there's an eternity, I'm going to put that thought into your mind. That there, 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 is, bless you. there is a heaven and there is a hell. And the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the only way. He is the door. He is the only door. Yes, Lord. There is no other way. Amen. Islam is not the way. Amen. Buddhism Amen. is not the way. Catholicism and some of their teachings, it's not the way. But only Jesus Christ is the way. Amen. He is the truth and He is the life. I challenge you to study. What does the scriptures say about Christ? What do the scriptures say about Jesus? The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I challenge you to open up that Bible, that old dusty Bible that's been sitting on your desk that you haven't touched in years. I challenge you to open it and read it. What does it say inside of it? What does it say about Jesus? What does it say about me? You know the Bible talks about you. The Bible talks about your human nature, who you are, where you come from, where you're going, the purpose of your life. Life is found in the scriptures and the scriptures point to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's Lord. Here you are, brother. All right. Go again. Oh, uh, yeah. Here you, 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 I'll hand this to you if you don't mind. So I'm just looking, looking at some verses. Okay. Oh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
We're out here tonight because there is a plague in our land. There is a virus that's killing thousands and thousands of people every day. This is not the coronavirus. Though many of us were worried about that virus. Some of you have 12 vaccines. You feared for your life. But the Bible says that my people would humble themselves and pray. If my people would humble themselves and pray, I would heal their land. And all of your vaccines, Mount Airy, did you take the prey? Were you just going with man invention? Were you just going with the words of men, the ideas of men, or did it ever occur to you when you feared for your life to humble yourself, to say, wait a minute, we're not in control. Nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody is in charge of this world. Nobody is in charge of their life. Let me get down on my knees. And let me pray to someone who's stronger. Let me pray to someone who's wiser. I wonder what sicknesses would be gone by now if we would humble ourselves and pray. I wonder what unnecessary pain that you didn't have to go through, that you wouldn't have gone through if we humbled ourselves and prayed. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3, if you pray to the Lord, He will answer and He will show you unsearchable things. We search the world on our own intelligence and human efforts and we fall, up, we fall short. But if you would pray, if you would pray, you would learn unsearchable things. The person who does not think God will answer is the person who has never tried to pray. I'm afraid to say, even in our churches, even professing believers, Consider prayer a matter of doctrine, but not a matter of practice. We say we're too busy to pray. I got to get to work. I got to get to my friends. I got so much stuff going on, I cannot bother to pray. The reason we don't pray is not because we lack time. It is because we lack humility. We don't think prayer will work. We think we're so smart and so powerful to wake up every single day and do what we think is right. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to man, but it leads to death. Your way is death. Your best intelligence is death. But there's a way of God. And His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His thoughts are not like our thoughts, and His thoughts lead to, to life. That's like if you ever thought you had a good idea and it turned out not to be a good idea. You are going to go do something, you are going to go do a prank, and you thought it was going to be cool, and it turned out not to be really that good. We were not really that smart at the end of the day. The Bible talks about that. But the Bible says there is one, and He is the only wise King. He's the only one who's wise. Amen. And if you would call on Him and talk to Him and pray to Him, He would show you His ways. Yes, Lord. Thank you. But you could go on leading your death style. A life without Jesus is not a lifestyle, it's a death style. You could go on humping your vehicle and living how you think is right, but it leads to death. And we're here tonight to tell you to don't wait till death to turn to life. 
Don't wait till you're too chained to move, to turn to freedom. Freedom is in Jesus Christ. Freedom is in Jesus Christ. Where is the praying church? Where is the praying Christian? Where, where is a church in this area that will have a prayer meeting? Because they believe so much that God is a God who speaks. That only fake gods don't answer. That only fake gods are deaf and mute. But the true and living God, He is a God who speaks. What don't you have by now that you should have because you didn't pray? You didn't ask. The Bible says ask and receive. What don't you have by now that you should have and you would have if you just asked your perfect Heavenly Father? There was a missionary once who said you could tell how popular a church is, a pastor is, by who shows up for a church service. But you could tell how popular Jesus is by who shows up to pray. Church, I'm talking to the Christian right now. Have we forgotten who our God is? Do we really need so much entertainment and so much professionalism just to have a God experience? Or could you get on your knees with faith, believing everything God says, and call on the name of Jesus and be healed? Call on the name of Jesus and find unsearchable things. It's time for the church to wake up again so that the world could wake up again and to humble ourselves and pray. God bless you, sir. I believe that God, God is calling you. Do you know the Lord? Amen. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, one thought I had. You want to preach a little more? Yeah. Here you are, brother. Thank you. So. In John chapter 1, the scriptures read, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Amen. We're here today to tell you about light. We're here today to tell you about Jesus, the light of the world. The scriptures call him the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. And we're also here to tell you today about darkness and that about how those do not coexist with one another. Light and darkness does not mix together. The scriptures say that light, that the darkness can never extinguish the light. And what we're bringing you today is the light of Christ, it's Jesus. But at the same time, we're exposing 
that within you lies darkness. Within you there is darkness, there is sin. But what we're bringing to you today is Jesus, who is the light. And the light that we carry, darkness can never extinguish. And the light that you can carry, darkness will never extinguish. How does one become a bearer of this light? Well, that's found in Romans chapter 9. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10. Where it says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. When someone is Lord over your life, it means that the decisions that they make they have, they have full control over your life. They govern the way you live. I'm here to tell you today that something is Lord over your life. Maybe it's drugs, maybe it's sex, maybe it's money. You are a slave to something and something is controlling you. At the same time, Jesus, God, wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your master. Yes. I'd rather be a slave to, to God than a slave to sin. Amen. <clears throat> I'd rather be a slave to God than a slave to sin. I was once a slave to sin. Before I became... What's up, bro? How you doing? God bless you, my brother. It's one of the, he's a spiritual leader, brother um, James, another James. <laughs> okay. He's a brother from from the barn. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's another brother. Praise the Lord. I'd rather be a slave to God than a slave to sin. Man. And I used to be a slave to sin. I used to be a slave to liquor. I used to be a strong alcoholic from the age of 17, actually. At 17 or maybe 15 years old, I picked up my first bottle. But by the age of 17, I was a slave to liquor. At the age of 12, I became a slave to marijuana, to weed, to, yeah. to smoking. We're talking about being a slave to God or being a slave to sin. I was a slave to sin at one point. Before I met the Lord Jesus Christ, I was a slave to sin. I was a slave to liquor, the age of 17. I was a slave to marijuana Man. at the age of 12. I was a slave to sex, to pornography. And not just heterosexual sex, homosexual sex. I was a slave to sexual passions and desires and lust. I mean, it controlled my every move. I did and lived and breathed for sexual things. I was a slave to lust. That's what we're taught with the, 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 what I'm talking about is just lust. Fornication and all different types of things that the Bible declares as sin, I was a slave to it. I was a slave to money, I was a slave to, um, to anger. I was always angry all the time. Anger controlled me, I would have outbursts of wrath and frustration. I was a slave to sin before I became a slave to God. And if you're not a slave to righteousness, you are a slave to sin. If Jesus is not your Lord, then the bottle will be. 
if Jesus is not your Lord, then sex will be. If Jesus is not your Lord, then drugs will be. Then money will be. I challenge you to examine yourself and look within yourself and ask, who is my Lord? Is, is money my Lord? Is drugs my Lord? Is alcohol my Lord? Is sex my Lord? Or is Jesus my Lord? Jesus wants to be your Lord. You don't have to be a slave to the drugs and to the alcohol and to the, the pornography and to the secret yes. sexual sin and to the, all the things that are pleasurable but in the end lead to death. In the end, these things lead to hell. You don't have to be enslaved to it. You can be set free. God can set you free from alcohol addiction. If you turn to Jesus Christ, He can take away that desire. It's actually miraculous. I serve a God that has miracle working power. My God performs miracles. I am a walking miracle. Though I was a slave to all types of sexual sin, homosexuality, I was a slave to the drugs, I was a slave to that bottle, to the alcohol, I was a slave to anger. My God set me free. Jesus set me free and it was a miracle. I called on the name of Jesus. There was no one else to call upon. All hope was lost. There was nothing a counselor could do for me. There was nothing the therapist could do for me. There was nothing that I could do for myself. I needed someone, I needed something greater than me. I'm here to tell you that you cannot heal yourself. A broken person cannot fix another broken person. And without Christ, you are broken. I couldn't fix myself. I needed someone who could do the fixing for me. Amen. And a lot of us turn to people to try to fix us, and they're just as broken as we are. It's impossible. A negative plus a negative does not equal a positive. I needed someone to do the fixing for me, and I'm telling you that Jesus is the one that will fix you. Amen. Jesus will fix you. Bless you. I needed a power greater than me to set me free from the drug addiction. I needed a power greater than me to set me free from the alcohol addiction. I needed a power greater than me to set me free from the pornography addiction. I needed a power greater than me to set me free from homosexuality and all types of sin and sexual sin. I couldn't fix myself and no other broken human being can fix me either. I needed one who was unbreakable, and that is Jesus. I needed one who was unshakable, and that is Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I needed one who had never tasted sin, and that was Jesus. So I called on the name of Jesus. And I was a skeptic, just like some of you are. I didn't really believe if he risen from the grave. I didn't really believe if he was actually crucified. If he actually was put into a tomb and that stone actually rolled away and he actually walked out of that grave. I was a skeptic. I said, you're going to have to prove to me that you are who you say you are. So I tested the Lord. <laughs> and I said, Jesus, if you are who you say you are, Set me free from the drug addiction. Amen. Set me free from the pornography. Set me free from the alcohol addiction. Set me free from the... Lord. And two weeks later, after I called upon the name of the Lord, the taste of drugs had went from my mouth. The taste of alcohol had went from my mouth. The desire to watch pornography was broken. The desire to lust Amen. after men was broken. The power of sin was broken off of me, but it was through Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel we preach to you. That Jesus can break the power of sin that lives within you. The desire 
to live a sinful lifestyle that is in you because of the first one who sinned, Adam. The Bible says that Jesus is greater than Adam. One man brought sin into the world, but through another man, eternal life and forgiveness has come, and that's through Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's the gospel we preach to you. We don't preach a powerless gospel. No, I serve a God that does miracles. I'm a walking miracle. Yes. If anybody among you is sick, if you are sick, if you're suffering with diseases, I believe if I pray for you in faith, my God will heal you. Amen. Because I serve a miracle working God. Yes, Lord. If you're struggling with addictions Amen. to pornography or alcohol, if you come over and let us pray for you, we believe that that addiction will break because I serve a miracle working God. Because Jesus is a miracle worker. So turn to Jesus today. Keep going. Come and receive your miracle. Turn to Christ today. Yes, Lord. There's a miracle with your name on it. Amen. That first miracle is eternal life. Amen. That you don't have to go to hell. Amen. That you will be spared from the wrath to come. Amen. I talked about how I was set free from the drugs and the alcohol and the pornography and the homosexuality. It was a true miracle. I called upon the name of the Lord and that's exactly what happened. But the most important thing that I just could not let shake from my heart as I walked up and down the streets at night, that I was made right with God. Yes, Lord. I was made right with God. Amen. I knew that if I died, I would spend eternity in heaven. Amen. Yes, being set free from the drugs was great. And the pornography and the alcohol and the homosexuality and the, the sexual sin being radically transformed by the blood of Jesus and Amen. by the Spirit of my God was great. But, but the most important thing, the most beautiful Amen. thing, the most awe thing that I can ever think of that I was made right with God. Amen. That if I die, I would spend eternity in heaven. I was on my way to hell. Yes. That I was on Jesus my way saves. to hell. Yes. That I was Christ on my way died to hell. For your sins. Freedom in Jesus. But through Jesus Christ, I was now not. <laughs> I was now on my way to heaven. I now knew that if I died, I would spend eternity with the Lord. Do you know where you're going when you die? Do you know where you will spend eternity? Do you know that if you die today, you will spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or would you spend eternity in hell? I know where I'm going when I die. Do you? Amen. That same God who worked the miracle in me who set me free, who gave me his spirit, who gave me eternal life. He's still saving people today. He's still calling you today. Jesus is still knocking on the door of yes. hearts today. Yes, and if Lord. you can hear his voice, harden not your heart, but instead open up your heart and allow him in. If you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, turn to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. If you can hear the call of God today, harden not your heart, but instead turn to him. Yes, Lord. While he may be found, turn to him. One day, this gospel message, this good news, the fact that man can live in right relationship with God won't be preached. One day, and that day is coming soon, where Jesus will come back. Jesus is coming back. 
He is going to come. Yes. Are you ready? Are you ready for the return of Jesus Christ? Are you prepared to see him? Are you prepared to stand face to face with the one who created you? Are you prepared? Because he's coming quickly. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today. How do you get saved? How do you get saved? The Bible says, repent every single one of you. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you will receive the Holy Ghost. You will receive power to overcome sin. Amen. You will receive power to be his witness. Yes. You will receive the Holy Ghost that seals you until that day of redemption. Amen. You must repent. You must change the way you view things. You must align the way you think with what God says. That means you must know what God says. And that's why we're here to tell you what God says. Amen. It says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? We've been sent here by the Lord himself to tell you about Jesus. Amen. So that you may believe in him and that you may receive eternal life. You must repent to be born again. The Bible says, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Unless you turn to the Lord, you will not see the kingdom of God. How does one be born again? The scriptures say that humans can only reproduce human life but the Spirit of God gives birth to spiritual life. Amen. You call on the name of Jesus Christ and receive His Spirit. Then you are born again. And when you're born again, you don't go on living the same life as you lived before. The desire for those things will fall away. Amen. The desire to live for God will arise in you. It will arise in you. You will no longer have a desire to live contrary to the way of the Lord. But instead you will love Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Turn to the Lord while He may be found. Lord. Turn to Jesus while he may be found. There's grace, there's mercy, there's forgiveness at the cross, at the cross. There you will see the light. At the foot of the cross, you will see the light. Amen. I guarantee that everything that I'm saying is true. That if you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see the light. You will see hope. You will find peace. You will find joy. You'll be reconciled to the one who created you. God loves you. And so do we. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. I need to work out a little more. <laughs> I, I felt like I should have held it for you at the end. I nope. apologize. It's okay. Because I know it's tiring. Yeah, it's okay.
but I feel good. It's dwindled down a little bit. That's right. Um, praise God. Amen. You know, I feel like there's like enough response, but just maybe the spot we're in, it's hard to come over here. Or mm. That man could have come over here. Um, but also just, I'm learning as we go as well. Yeah. So. But maybe there's a spot in the future with some foot traffic. I still want to do that restaurant. <laughs> yeah. That will definitely... Of course. Uh, was we, I thought we were supposed to do that today. I felt like... I, I felt like coming here one more time. Okay. And especially getting this on video. Of course. But Are we still going? I, 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 if you want to, I feel okay. good. I, okay, let's go. I need to build up my endurance, I guess. All right, Levi, thank you. Uh, I think we're gonna close up here. Thank you so much for shooting this. Um, here, we should probably clear out. All right, let me, uh, let me, let me be ready, especially right now. Yeah, let's clear out, and maybe uh, if you want to drive over to Chick-fil-A, I'll treat you guys to dinner. Oh, praise God.